Hey guys, it's me, Bernie Bear, and welcome to the first of, hopefully many, Five Nights at Freddy's What Ifs. This What If is one that I've had on my mind for a while. What if Michael was Springtrap? Before we get into it, there are a few things you need to assume for this What If to work, since this is FNAF and barely anything is confirmed. Here's the list. This one isn't really a lore thing, but the crying child's name is Evan. I don't fully believe in this myself, but to prevent me from having to say crying child every time I'm talking about him, I'm just gonna call him Evan. It just rolls off the tongue better. Evan, aka the crying child, did go through the FNAF 4 nightmare experiments we learn about in Didophobia, and is the one who gave Mike the nightmares in FNAF 4. He was also the runaway in Midnight Motorist, and was placed in the experiments after the events of that minigame to stop him from running away. Michael doesn't get scooped until after William gets springlocked in Follow Me, and finally, Mike is Fritz Smith. I know that some of these points are, like, still debated, and some of them are a little shaky, but I hope you can just go along with it. I know, at least myself, I struggle with following other people's theories if there's, like, a small little thing that I don't agree with, but just, uh, this is a what if. It's not me trying to solve a timeline. It's just a fun little thing I'm doing. So, I hope that's okay with you guys. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. Not too long after Mike got fired from Freddy's, it closed for good. But Mike isn't done with the place just yet. After having surreal nightmares about the Freddy's cast, and feeling like there's still one piece of the puzzle he's yet to uncover, Mike returns to the now-abandoned pizzeria. Before entering, he checks his watch. 11.37 p.m. Once inside, it takes him a while to find anything of note, but eventually he sees something he didn't see on the cameras before. A narrow, door-shaped seam in the wall near the bathroom. Mike presses his fingers along the outline of the camouflage door. Here's a small click. As the door opens a few inches, Mike pushes open the door, revealing a hidden room. The safe room. There isn't anything of note in the room. Old arcade cabinets, a few dusty props, and cobwebs in the corners, all of which are appropriately accompanied by the faint sound of water droplets hitting the floor. But then, Mike sees something. Resting on a nearby wall is a yellow suit, a little dirtied and decayed, but one Mike is able to recognize nonetheless. Spring Bonnie, the character his father liked to associate himself with to an almost unhealthy degree. Mike stands there for a moment, listening to the droplets of water from the leaky ceiling hit the floor as he contemplates what to do next. He thinks about all that has happened in his life, all the mistakes he's made. He's reminded of his brother, Evan, and how Michael is responsible for ending his life way before it should have been his time. He thinks about all the other kids killed at Freddy's, who are now trapped within those giant cold machines in the room over. Their lives were stolen, and now they're stuck in a state between life and death itself, unable to move on. A tear rolls down Mike's cheek. He knows what he has to do. Mike grabs a metal object from the corner near the spring bonnie suit. This is it. Mike would try to free the spirits from their metal prisons, or he would die trying. It's not like he had much to live for anyway. He checks his watch. 11.58 p.m. Two minutes. The longest two minutes of Mike's life. Once the clock strikes midnight, he leaves the secret room. Armed with the metal object and a bucket, Mike makes a loud noise. Surely that'll wake them up. Everything goes quiet for a moment, before Mike hears footsteps coming right towards him. Gabriel is pulled back into reality. 12 a.m. The nightmare begins again. Almost immediately after waking up, he hears a sound coming from the bathroom. The guard had left a little bit ago, but Gabriel figures he should check anyway. Making his way to the bathrooms, he's met with an object flying at him before he can even begin to process what's happening. He feels the robotic parts of his body fall off one by one. Gabriel was so used to feeling empty when he was in control of Freddy that he had forgotten what it was like to feel anything other than that feeling. So when his robotic limbs came flying off, it was nice to finally feel something after all these years. But that comfort quickly faded away as Gabriel realized what he was feeling. Pain. Pain he hadn't felt in a long, long time. Gabriel sat there in a pile of his own robotic parts, confused and angry. He was freed from Freddy, yes, but he still couldn't move on. The nightmare persisted. One down, three more to go. Mike quickly retreats back to the hidden room to catch his breath. Surely all the noise he made will attract other animatronics, so he'll have to act fast. One by one, Mike destroys each animatronic. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy are all quickly reduced to nothing but piles of scrap metal and broken shells. But Mike isn't done yet. He can still feel his brother somewhere in the location, trapped. As Mike begins to leave the safe room to try to find his brother, he's met with four spirits who block his exit, the children. They just stand there, not moving, but filled with agony and hatred. 